You're listening to 2325 Fitness with your hosts Rafi Husseini and Talha Javed. If you're new here, in this podcast we discuss factual and evidence-based information that covers all aspects of health and fitness. In this episode, our guest Isa Ghaleb, who is a Isa certified personal trainer and also an avid CrossFit athlete, talks about the misconceptions behind CrossFit, why everyone should look into joining CrossFit, and a little bit about the world's fittest man, Matthew Fraser. Enjoy the episode. Welcome back everyone to 2325 Fitness, your favorite health and fitness podcast. Today we have with us Isa Ghaleb. He's a local from where I'm from, from Michigan. He lives in Dearborn. So just a quick background about Isa. He started as, out as an athlete in high school. He really loved wrestling. And he started traditional bodybuilding methods when he came to working out. And then one day, as the story goes, he went with his friends, started doing CrossFit, and now he's into CrossFit for almost two years. Before that, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for taking the time for being here today. Just for the audience and for myself, Matala, just let us know a little bit more in depth as like what led to your journey uh, to CrossFit, to being a part of the CrossFit community. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Thank you, uh, Rafi and Talha, for inviting me, man. It's, it's an honor, dude. Um, so kind of similar to what you said, man. Um, you know, growing up, I, uh, you know, I played sports my entire life. And then in high school, um, you know, I picked up wrestling, right? I like to say wrestling was like my God-given sport. Like, I have never stepped on a wrestling mat prior to being 14 freshman year in high school. And I'm not sure if you guys, if you guys know any wrestlers, but they'll always tell you that, it's a tough sport. Mentally, it's a tough sport. But one of my favorite things about it was um, was the, the exhaustion we go through the sport, right? Like, genuinely, the conditioning of the sport as compared to nothing else, right? So, you know, I wrestled for a couple of years throughout high school. And then post-graduation, you know, I, I kind of did some wrestling in college, did some jiu-jitsu, but I was still kind of figuring out what I wanted to do, right? Um. And I missed that point of exhaustion. Like bodybuilding was great. Don't even, I mean, I was walking around 200, 205, pushing like pushing heavy weight. I felt great. I was like, Monday was international chest day. Tuesday was like your, your traditional bro splits, man. And I loved it, right? And then in my head, I had like big numbers I really wanted to hit, right? My biggest numbers, I wanted a 315 bench at like 200 pounds or less, right? I really wanted that. So I worked towards it. So there was one morning where um, I was actually working in the gym. It was in Powerhouse here in Dearborn. And it was one morning where I was like, you know what? I feel strong. I'm going to go bench. So it was funny because I used to work the 5 a.m. shift. So I used to work 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. From 5 a.m. to 11 a.m., gym was dead, right? Two people in there. Literally used to have full-blown workouts while on the clock. I don't know if I should have said that, but oh, well. Um, <laughs> so, but one day, so, you know, I put 315 on the bench, you know, warmed up, whatever, and I, and I, and I pushed it, right? So I pushed it, I racked it, I got up, I was kind of happy, hit my goal, and I'm like, now what? <laughs> like, I don't know what I want to do now. So I was like, that for, you know, the we, we, we like to, uh, the our bro egos is like, we yeah. like to play increments, right? The 45, 45, 40. It's, I mean, I'd love to brag and say, hey, I benched 315 over saying, hey, I benched 305. You know, 315 sounds cooler, right? So the next big jump was 405, right? I knew I wasn't getting there anytime soon. I was kind of getting burnt out. I was kind of getting bored. I was always like a natural competitor. I always knew I wanted to compete in something. I just didn't know what yet. That morning of, um, you know, a few days before that, one of my good friends, Alejandro, who's actually my training partner, um, he was like, dude, come to CrossFit 8 Mile. It's a gym here in Michigan. He's like, just trust me. You're a natural born out, uh, athlete. You will like this CrossFit stuff. My entire life, my entire life, dude, I literally heard, bro, crossfitters can't do pull-ups. Man, crossfitters have bad form. Every single thing bodybuilders and what the world says about crossfitters, so all I was, that's all I, you know, I was like, I don't want to do a crossfit meat. No, come on, man. And then I watched um, The Redeemed and Dominant. It was the CrossFit Games documentary on Netflix, right? And I said, I want to do this. Literally picked up my phone. I texted, uh, I DM'd the CrossFit 8 Mile page on Instagram. Owner, uh, owner reached out and two and a half, two, almost this March would be two years. I've never looked back on the decision, man. One of the best things I've ever done in my life. So, so say, awesome, to man. add on to what you just said, 
I was just talking to uh, Ruffy about CrossFit before this. When we were planning, you know, we're going to be talking to you about this. Right. You being a CrossFitter, everything you're talking about, me too. Like just the standard going to the gym, bodybuilding, lifting weights, iron, blah, blah, blah. We hear about CrossFitters and have the stigma of, you know, they're going to injure themselves. What are they doing? Wiggling to do pull-ups and all that. Is that the same thing you're talking about? You heard of before you joined and started doing CrossFit? Honestly, yeah. Honest, if I'm being 100% right now, I will argue that point with, with my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but beforehand, yeah, like I was like, but it's kind of, it's kind of, it was unfair on my end because I never really understood what CrossFit was. I seen it. I understood it as that I understood it and I looked at it through the perspective of the hate it got from bodybuilders and powerlifters, yeah. right? Um, so that's how I took it as. And then I watched the videos of them doing like chest to bar, uh, chest to bar but, uh, pull ups, if you guys know what those are. You know, those that like, awkward movement they do on a pull up. You know, I seen the videos. I was like, bro, what's going on? I was like, what is this? And then I joined it. And then I was like, I will never, I will. I love it, man. And I know okay, that so the, uh, a couple of days ago, you actually made a video too where it's like, hey, you know, from a bodybuilding perspective, you know, yeah. we can do chin ups, we can do pull ups, but can bodybuilders do the uh, the bar up, the, the muscle ups, you know, and then yeah. chest, chest to bar ups and all those workouts. And it was impressive because you, in that video, you clearly showed that, you know, what bodybuilders can do, crossfitters can kind of do like one, one step ahead of it. Yeah. So, Part of the hate that I see that comes from bodybuilders, or even me, I don't know much about CrossFit. After talking to Ruffy, I looked into it. But is it true that we don't focus on form and just kind of keeping the safety of the body in mind? So what is CrossFit for people that don't know, like myself, I guess? Yeah, so, break down into like, so what I would say is like, if you can break down into like simple terms, because like for me, example, right, for, for the longest time, I thought CrossFit is like, you know, a bunch of crazy movements where it's like people just like, you know, just lifting weights in the craziest way possible. But then I realized that over the past few years, like CrossFit is a big deal, you know, like being right. a CrossFit athlete takes a lot of endurance, takes a lot of, a uh, lot of, lot. it asks a lot from you. Of course, bodybuilding does too, but CrossFit is like sports and bodybuilding combined. So just like in simple terms, what is CrossFit? Um, I would say in as simple as I can put the sport of fitness. Um, so I, you know, I, I've been doing it for two years. I can tell you tons of people who can explain it better than what I can, but, sure. and through my perspective, um, uh, I, I, I'm a nobody, but through my perspective, I can tell you how I perceive it as it's genuinely the sport of fitness, right? Um, it's, we, we do our bench presses, we do our squats, we deadlift combined. So we have our strength portion. So those are a lot of our strength. Like we'll have our heavy splits. We'll have our five by fives. We'll have our. 10 rep maxes or three rep maxes or one rep max, et cetera, et cetera. And then a lot of times it's followed by a WOD, W O D, which stands for workout of the day. And a lot of times it's, um, uh, it's, it's normally, uh, uh, it's like, and uh, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a conditioning piece, if you will. So it's a literally, I like to think of it as strength in the beginning, it's strength and conditioning. Um, so I'll tell you this, man. I have never, ever learned more about my body. I've never learned more about stretching and mobility and form if it wasn't for the CrossFit gym I attend to and the coaches I've been coached about. Till this day, we, our coaches coach us is whenever we rep, whenever we, um, we, we find out our, our max, our maxes, and we max out every couple months. We don't max out every couple weeks. Um, it's, they always coach us, they coach us is, it's your one rep max with proper technique, right? Mm -hmm. So if we ever see a breakdown in form, we're stopping. Um, so there is a big, um, there is this big uh, misconception of CrossFitters don't have proper form. I can argue that, man. I, I, to be honest, I look at the videos of me squatting back in my, my bodybuilding days and me squatting now, night and day difference, man. Everything mm -hmm. just makes more sense. You know, I'm more in tune with my body. So one thing I did notice that you talked about was you learn more about your body. Um, and that relates to when I looked up CrossFitters as well, I did realize it's more day-to-day -day functionality for your body exactly. uh, rather than a bodybuilder. Like you go there, you do three, four sets, you pause. It's just one motion and CrossFit right. is, I don't know, but I feel like it's more of a circuit. Like you said, strength with conditioning. Yeah. Um, so more functionality for the body. Is that true? Yeah. More day-to-day -day function? Exactly. So another, I mean, I'm glad that you brought that up because I would, uh, I would also describe it as functional fitness, right? For instance, um, 
at least my one of my goals here is I like to be an athlete year round, right? So if you guys are like, hey, Isa, let's go, let's go run for a mile. All right, I'm down. If you're like, hey, Isa, let's let's go left heavy. Hey, let's do it, man. Now I can I can tell you if I told all my bodybuilders from day we're gonna go for a mile, they're like, I already did my 10 minutes of cardio on the treadmill. <laughs> like, yeah. I get it. But granted, if we if we both took off our shirts and you said who looks better, it's always those guys. Those guys, because they train for aesthetics. It's literally bodybuilding, right? So that their diet, their nutrition, everything is revolved around their goals, right? Um, but yeah, man, thought how definitely uh, CrossFit is definitely functional fitness, man. Um, I would definitely say it's more for functionality. Why CrossFit over bodybuilding? Just to sum that up for anyone listening. <laughs> um. Because, because you've done both, you know, you've done both. And like yeah, right. being a wrestler, uh, being a wrestler, I would say that I think body, in my, at least in my experience, that bodybuilding movements play a huge role because you got the strength, the power and all that. But you you came to CrossFit, you, know, you transitioned being that wrestling being your actual sport. So, no, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, so um, for me is, for me is like, personally speaking, I wanted to compete. I wanted there was a time in my life where I generally wanted to walk on stage and like do like um um like a men's physique competition, but I I didn't know if I wanted to, I just wanted to compete. Like I said, I didn't know what, right? That first workout I had at, at our CrossFit gym, it's shout out CrossFit eight mile, man. Um they uh they literally just whooped me. And I loved it. I loved the, the fact that I was breathing heavy. I felt like I had a great pump. I felt strong. And then I went through a good conditioning piece. Um, for me, I just wanted to find something I can compete at and then I can excel at and eventually become an elite CrossFitter. And that's my goal. It's my goal is to become as elite as my body will possibly allow me to, or as, as I possibly can. So I'm not sure if that answered your question, Talha, but that's definitely the reason why I want to, I, I do CrossFit over body bodybuilding for me it was um like it i one day i would probably say when it, you know like after my crossfit career i'd probably go back to bodybuilding just for the pure purpose of looking good aesthetically looking good granted do i think you now from the, for health purposes i think there are better alternatives um i mean one can argue hey just add more cardio into your bodybuilding reg regimen and i can agree with that um but CrossFit is like, hey, I don't got to think about it. CrossFit does it all for me. You know, like I'll get a good sweat. I'll get, I'll breathe hard and I'll lift heavy, you know? You mentioned cardio and then switching to, over to bodybuilding for a physique purpose maybe later on. Um, since you've done both and we mentioned conditioning and strength combined, have you noticed the more conditioning or cardio you've done, the less muscle? Some people say eats away at your muscle. So how does that correlate? Um. No, not at all, man. So um, uh, I'm not sure if you guys talked about this in the past or I think you guys one day were talking about um, lifestyle and nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. Your goals, right? You, you eat and your nutrition is based off of your goals, right? Um, I personally speak, I probably eat, man, probably in between three, like about three to 4,000 calories a day at minimum, man. Come competition, it's it's increasing, right? And like, I have a nutritionist that does a lot of my programming for me, Um. But like, for instance, uh, like I don't, here's, I, it, it's kind of going to, it's, it's, it's going to sound kind of silly here, but my goal is not to look good. My goal is to be an elite crossfitter. There's a difference, right? My, I eat for performance, right? I don't eat to look good. Granted, with the, when, when you're, when you're training out, when you're training the way we are and you're eating as clean as you should be, yes, you're going to look naturally look good. You're going to look, you're, it's not like you're going to not look good, but there's a difference because if I wanted to have the, if I wanted the, the definition of my shoulders, like washboard abs and defined quads and whatever the case may be, I'm eating eight, like 1200 calories a day. You know what I mean? I'm eating my, uh, just literally just tuna and, and man, I, I don't miss it. Like I don't miss it. <laughs> right. I don't. I generally love the fact that I can work out really, really hard a couple of days a week and I can eat 80 grams of carbs in my post-workout meal. You see what I'm saying? Like, I love that, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's kind of that's kind of motivating me to switch to CrossFit. I might give it up. <laughs> yeah. Like, shout out to Ape Mob. By the way, which I have been. I have been. Uh, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, two things, actually, uh, from one is that a lot of times that I've seen except for like overhead squat and like different movements. There are a lot of similar movements between bodybuilders and CrossFitters, correct? Now, correct. how would you say they differ in terms of performing those movements when it comes to bench press or when it comes to deadlifts? 
uh, a bodybuilder versus a CrossFitter? Um, that's I love that question, man. I love that question. So if we were to walk into any gym right now, any gym right now, dude, I will, we will probably see people rowing literally your they like the sound of the metal clanging, right? So they'll be literally rolling like this, right? <laughs> Constantly hear the clanging and the banging of the metal plates or whatever the case may be, right? A lot of times, this is personally, per, I personally speak. So I'd look and I'd look at, you know, and with a lot of my friends, I literally watch them do their pull-ups. I'll watch them do their chest presses. And it's just a quick, little. they just rep it out it's, and I'm done. And I look at them like, dude, you know, like as a bodybuilder, you should not be moving that fast. I'm like, what do you mean? It's three sets of 10. I'm like, dude, I was like, <laughs> focus on the movement look for just like just focus on the movements in general as a crossfitter that's what i want to do in competition there's a difference as a crossfitter uh uh there might be a, a workout that says all right the we are trying we the competition is who can do um the most amount of squats and pull-ups and muscle-ups in 20 minutes whatever the case may be or it's going to be like here's your workout it's 10 rounds of burpees squats and pull-ups 10 rounds for time. So now I want to rush through my reps, if that makes sense, because now it's, we're trying to get the reps done as fast as, as fast as we possibly can to finish the workout, the competition. But a lot of times it's bodybuilders and I can't speak on every bodybuilders, but I, I would say in the every, everyday, everyday people, um, we see people rushing through their movements, not focus, focusing on a contraction on doing a row or my not focusing connection. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. That is, that is, um, that's very rare, man. It's, it's, it's not many people have it, you know, um, a lot of people lift. So like they're, they're very ego, like their, their egos are everything, man. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, you don't need to pull the entire rack on a lap pull down machine, man. It's just like your lats is like contract that muscle, you know, um, uh, the leg press. I mean, leg presses. I have, I had negative feelings towards the leg press. I don't <laughs> think that, I don't think a leg press, um, translate into a functionality but that's a whole different story but like yep. it's like people just need to slow down and like rocky what you just said that mind to muscle uh, connection you know awesome man. That's, oh, sorry i've been on a little tangent no no that's that's really good that you described that because i've seen that in the gym too you know there's and nowadays the notion has changed about like moving away from ego lifts you know we've seen like even people who are right. like fitness model aesthetically you know they're into the body but they're like, you know what get the slow reps you know get find the muscle that you're actually working on so many times you try to work out your chest but you end up working out your shoulder you know and then i think that's what differs yeah. in crossfit as you mentioned is that it's more about understanding what muscle you're working and then getting better at that movement i know you mentioned you're eating like 2000 to 4000 calories and you know when you're competing it's going to go up so let's let's run through your weekly diet and training how does that look like uh, in in a regular you know like on a day to day basis what does it look like on a weekly basis your regular training and diet um so for the most part i work out 5 days a week 2 days are active recovery um by the way i loved your post about active recovery and rest man um yeah. there's definitely a day i actively recover um there's like a foam roller underneath my bed i got some floss um if you guys know what that is um i like you know i'll wrap my quads and stuff and then there's Long days where like the dance I literally rest um by the days i do train um i'm in the we work out for at least at minimum about two hours all right honestly i'm not gonna be one of those guys that say I, i'm in the gym four or five hours a day i would say give or take about two hours some days it's less some days it's more um my diet is, I'm a big believer in what you eat today fuels you tomorrow, right? So everything I ate today will fuel me into, in, fuel me for tomorrow's workout, right? And going on a tangent here, I just want to mention something about cheat meals and what I believe in, right? I worked out today, tomorrow I will rest, all right? So I will actually have my cheat meal today because tomorrow... I'm off. If I have my cheat meal on Thursday and I and I plan to work out on Friday, it's gonna it's gonna affect my workout on Friday. If that makes sense. So what you eat today fuels you tomorrow. Um, that's one of uh, the quotes my our, our nutritionist taught us, and I absolutely love it. But yeah, I mean, I work out about five days a week. Um, that includes our strength. That includes gymnastics. That includes um, flex uh, mobility, stretching, and then two days I'm recovering, and then. I mean, my macros are all towards what, towards that, you know? 
That was you, my question, actually, with the macros. You know, a traditional bodybuilder worries about like protein, carbs, fat. Yeah. Protein, general rule of thumb is a gram per, you know, your body weight. Is it similar to that or yeah. just eat more carbs for? But our macros, well, like, yeah, they play so a huge role when it comes to how you perform or how your movements are. Absolutely. Um, for, for the most part, I mean, your body can only absorb so, so much protein at, at a time, right? So I don't think that that changes from athlete to athlete. Um, I mean, I walk around about 185, 190 pounds. Um, I generally eat probably like 200 grams of protein, maybe give or take, maybe less, it's somewhere around there. Um, and then what generally changes is my fats and my carbs. Um, that's mm-hmm. what changes, right? Uh, that's where obviously, as you guys know better than I do, is that's when our energy, that's our energy levels are right. So carbohydrates definitely, um, man, I love carbs. Like I freaking love it. Like I love it. I love the fact that I told you, like, I love the fact that I can eat rice and uh, granted we're also big on what we're eating. So it's just not like anything. I'm a very, I try eating very, very clean. Um, like I don't, I stay away from any like refined oils, like anything like no, no, like if you don't know what, if, if you can't pronounce the ingredient, I don't think you should be consuming. <laughs> if you can't pronounce ingredients, I don't yeah. think, you know, Absolutely. but, um, mm-hmm. yeah, man. So I think to answer that question, Paha, is, uh, it's, um, the carbs and the fats is what changes for me from day to day. I say, have you competed yet? Or do you? Yeah, think- I have. Um, I, you I have, have uh, you know, say that again. I said you have competed. Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, I think now is maybe three. So last year was an off year, man. Last year was an off year for everyone. COVID kind of threw away. Honestly, last year, we I had planned two or three local competitions. The year before that, um, I, I had done I I had done CrossFit. I had done CrossFit, I think, in March of 2019. And then I competed in May or June. Very fresh into the sport. I actually competed in one of the hardest local competitions it's the summer open uh, i won't lie i got my butt kicked there are some fit people out in this in, in the world man there are some really fit people um and then me and uh, my one of my best friends my training partner his name is alejandro we competed a few times uh, we actually went to columbus once to compete took fourth there not too bad and then we took second at another one and i've competed yes i've competed now when it comes to um when it comes to uh off season and like normal season um i think the people who really really worry about that are um are like the, the crossfit games athlete that like the professional crossfitters just because that's their living that's generally what they do that's that's where they're making their money that is their life for me it's i don't really have an off season man i just do it year out year round and then come a competition i um I generally let my coaches know in advance, like, Hey man, what do you think about doing a uh, competition in June? And like, all right, cool. So then programming slightly changes for that competition. Um, if you guys are following anything in the CrossFit community, the CrossFit open is coming up, right? In years past, it was a five, it was a five week international global competition at every single level. Professional athletes do it. Your grandparents do it. Neighbors do it. Communities do it. Every level does it. It's, it's awesome, man. This year, they had to modify it a little bit. Just, it's three weeks this year. It starts it's starting March 11. Um, but f- for guys like me, we treat the Open as how fit did we get every like from last year to this year. So like the Open, I, I genuinely will give it all I, I possibly have. I possibly have, right? Yeah, maybe I'm not going to make the best. Um, I, I might not have the best scores in the world, but I want to see where I, I, I progress from the ISA in 2021 to the ISA in 2020. You see what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, you know, macros change, nutrition changes slightly on um, training changes slightly. Like this, this week right now, we're in a deload week where we're kind of taking it a bit easier and then we'll pick cardio wise. We'll pick it up real fast because the open is coming up. So it all depends, man. You know, it all depends on what time of year you're in, what love, what type of level athlete you're in, uh, you are, if you're, I know if you're a, a CrossFit Games athlete, a lot of times people will use their, because going on a quick tangent here, the open is one of the ways people can qualify for the games. So for many CrossFit Games athletes, this is where they, their entire year is this. 
um, or a, a sanctional event that can happen in August. The beauty of CrossFit is the games, the, set, the dates of this, the games are set. The qualifying dates alter. So it's wherever you choose to go and try to get in. And then based on that event, it's what you would, um, you would, you know, choose your, your schedule around, if that makes sense. Do you ever <laughs> plan on uh, competing for the CrossFit Games? Maybe in the future? Or have you ever given it a thought? That is a dream. Oh, one more time. You kind of cut off. Is it essential CrossFitters have what? Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned like coaches, right? You mentioned that, you know, I let my coaches know that there's a competition coming. So is CrossFit something that, if someone wants to learn it for a little bit with a coach, they work with the coach and then they're on their own or they need to have a coach for every single competition, every single thing that they do. Um, no, honestly, no, man. I think, I think, um, uh, I think you should have a coach in your corner. If you want to become anything elite, if you want to be, take it to the next level, but just like anything else in life, man, um, you can watch a couple of videos. I mean, quite frankly, you can watch videos. You can watch this and you can watch, um, like a CrossFit, I mean, you can watch my videos and see the workouts I did at home and you can try them at home, right? And it'll, it'll work, but I, my, my coaches, their, their knowledge is far beyond like their, it's, it's unmatched, man. So I, one thing I appreciate is their programming. I don't think about my program, right? I don't like wake up, wake up and be like, man, today I'm going to do leg day. I'm going to do like this and then walk into the shoulder and do shoulders, right? Oh, I made that joke earlier, right? Uh, my coach, uh, our coach, uh, Nick, he does a lot of, he does all my programming. So for I, I, Rafi, I can, I can speak on my behalf, but like he does all my day-to-day -day programming. Um, and then I let him know, like, obviously it's open communication, right? So, so I tell him, Hey, this feels really good, man. I really suck at wall balls. It's a big weakness of mine. And he goes like, all right, we're going to start working on wall walls or man, for some reason I can't, I can't string together my muscle ups. Like, okay. Now we're going to do drills towards this. The beauty of having a coach is you have someone who's been there. You have someone who can watch you because sometimes just like anything else in life, we kind of need another set of eyes. We have people who can watch you, adjust what you're doing, um, correct you, give you feedback. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just, for me, it's very, very helpful. Um, it's, all, it's a must that I have, I have coaches in my corner. So real quick, talking about your weekly training and you said your coaches plan out the week for you in a sense. How can someone like myself that doesn't know much about CrossFit and just standard typical bodybuilding for us it's like splits like biceps triceps uh right. chest and triceps so what would it be for a crossfitter in a week um so we kind of for the most part we kind of try sticking to ideally the same pattern if you will um but for instance um if the strength session for the day was heavy back squats ideally the workout would follow like it'll be a it'll be a it would be an intense workout that would normally be a leg dominated workout for instance um as a personal trainer i actually i train all my clients off functionality all of them are, are a functionality and i and i i mimic a lot of what the cross community does i'm a big believer in that but what i can tell you um what i've learned is if let's say i was training i was like okay, listen man we're gonna we're going to do, um, we're, we're, we're squatting today. Great. The workout will probably be a 10 minute AMRAP, AMRAP standing for as many rounds as possible or as many reps as possible. Basically, we're not going to stop moving for 10 minutes. We're moving 10 minutes straight. And it might be lunges, wall balls, air squats, and maybe, maybe like something random to give your legs a quick break, like push ups or sit ups, if you will, right? Um, so ideally we kind of try sticking with the same pattern, but, um, you have your strength session in the beginning for the most part. And then it's followed by a cardio or, or in layman terms, we can, we can use the word like hit high intensity interval training that many people could like understand. Do you, when you train your clients, you strictly train them just CrossFit based movements or it's like everything. No, it's their goals. So all my clients, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, so it's, I, um, I think a good trainer will train you based on what you want and not what I think you should do. Right. Right. For instance, I mean, medical, I mean, you, you, you guys ever go to a doctor and a doctor tells you, Hey, you, like when I wrestled, the doctor used to tell me, Hey, you should stop wrestling. Mm -hmm. like, right, I'm going to the next doctor. Like doctor can't tell me my goals. You know what I mean? I have my goals. So the reason why I say that is like, I have a client who, uh, who wanted to wrestle in a wrestling college. All right, cool. You need to get stronger, man. And you need to get more fit. So that's what we did. The beauty of CrossFit is that, 
or function functional, if you will, it's functional bodybuilding. That's what I like to think of it. Is that a they're going to get stronger, b they're going to move faster, and they're going to move stronger. If that makes sense, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but my clients, generally speaking, yes, I kind of I kind of do stick to the world of CrossFit and high intense training, um, and then uh, uh, a strength portion, you know. So someone getting strictly into the world of CrossFit, a beginner like myself, because I'm getting, honestly, I'm like, how many? Yeah, me too, man. I might sign up school real quick. So what kind of, I don't know, advice or beginner's workouts would you, like, you know, uh, go to the gym, you start off with like squats, uh, bench press, stuff like that. For CrossFit, like what would a month look like for a beginner? What kind of movements would you recommend? Like, for example, it's a good thing oh. that you asked that because, for example, for myself, and, and I have no shame in saying this, an overhead squat is a, one of the difficult movements that I've tried doing, and I cannot do it, <laughs> you know? And you, like, you make it look easy, like, because you've been doing it for a while, and Michelle, you know, like, and CrossFitters make it look so easy. Like, if someone wants to start, and they're going to be like, oh, man, this is such a difficult movement. Can I ever even do it? What would you tell them that their beginning month or like I still how much, you know, their starting off stage looks like? Um, honestly, man, I won't lie. It's funny that you say overhead spots. I won't lie. I was nervous. Snatching, if you guys know what a snatch is, I, I hated it with all my heart because A, I was scared. Right? A, I was kind of nervous. B, I sucked at it. My technique was garbage. So like I was, my strength was here. My technique was here. I mean, I've always been a strong kid. But I never had – my technique was never there. So that scared me. That intimidated me. But um, honestly, starting off slow, man, like for the most part, uh, if you, let's say you can't even lift a 45-pound barbell above your head, all right, we'll go down. We'll use um, a 35 – like a lot of times you say the women's bar, there's no shame in it, but it's a little bit lighter. The the I I might be using the wrong ter- terms, but the diameter of the bar is a little bit thinner. I don't think I've ever held the women's bar. A little bit thinner right? So that's easier to put above your head. Now, if you can't do that in the world of like fitness equipment, there's something called a training bar, which is literally 15 pounds. Um, you put that above your head. If that is not, if that's too, if that's not comfortable, a a simple PVC pipe that weighs less, it's 0.001 pounds or whatever the case is. You put that above your head and you get comfortable moving that, right? Just like, um, just, just like before you bench the pl- a plate for the first time, you started off with the bar, right? We all remember the time benching the bar and then it was 25 and then it was 35 and then it was 45. Even if it took three, four years, eventually you got there. Right. So it's just like, the, um, like, you know, we always say is when you walk into that door, leave your ego at the door. Right. It's not, we're not, you know, we're, we're here to generally get better. And every day, um, it's, 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 it's baby steps. It's little by little. Um, and slowly but surely you'll build the confidence you'll build the confidence to throw a bar up your head um but what about Rocky, like specific- i know a lot of times i think you mentioned it earlier but like yeah you know like the overhead squat you know a lot of times it looks like it can it's gonna hurt your shoulder or this whole this whole like rumor or whatever you want to call it that crossfitters get injury if i ask you a simple question hey if you're let's say you got to drive today but you're driving foot hurt every time every time you were to step on the pedal it would hurt right? Would you drive that day or would you just take the day off? Take the day off, right? Yeah. Like if it hurts, you won't do it, right? Simply, if you were, um, I don't know, if you were gardening and you didn't do anything and your back hurts, are you going to garden that day? No, you're probably going to probably gonna relax. Same thing in CrossFit, right? My shoulders hurt. You know, whatever the case it may be, whether it was from doing CrossFit, whether it's not, I'm going to take the day off. Like, you don't, no one in CrossFit says push through pain, push past or whatever. No, absolutely not. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, are your shoulders and maybe you're, you're exposed in new positions? Sure. Like a muscle up? Sure. Like, yeah, overhead squats. My, my shoulders in different position as bodybuilders. You'll never see a bodybuilder like this, right? Anything their elbows are in. But yeah, I mean, once you, once you get more confident doing it, do it. And if, if, if it causes any pain, hey, take a step back. Ask yourself why. Ask your coach. Coach, what am I doing wrong? Does this look okay? Hey, do I have tightness in my shoulders? A lot of it is a lot of times we have tight shoulders. A lot of times we have uh, our shoulders are weak. That pain might just expo- show, expose something that you're weak in. And you might, it might be like, hey, you need to get better at, I don't know, rear delts or your uh, your upper thoracic needs more stability work. And that generally might make you a better athlete, you know? 
that's how I think about it. Um, and I mean, up until two years, I've never, I, I never had a CrossFit injury. You know, I, I generally listen to my body. Yeah. I've been sore. I've been hurt. I've been whatever, but that's when I'm like, okay, take a step back. Issa, what'd you, what'd you do right today? What'd you do wrong today? You know what I mean? So. And I think it's really interesting because I was talking to Nick actually, again, shout out to Nick from eight mile. We should probably get him on sometime too, but I was talking to him and uh, like, he was telling me that CrossFit workouts are, movements that are supposed to be worked around injuries and that was interesting because in bodybuilding you can't really do much if you're injured you know but the fact that you can still work out in crossfit if you're injured is it was a very interesting that he told me that so i was actually more intrigued i was like man this is this is something i really really need to like look into one of the guys we work out we work out with he's on his like third acl injury or whatever but like i think it, it's nothing to i think he like left at work i forget you know it was over years at work but, um, like, you walk into the gym and you'll see him doing, like, shoulder presses. There's So, what I really like about CrossFit is there's a modification for every movement, right? Every single movement there's a modification for, right? A muscle-up will probably be the top of the chain when it comes to barbell movements, right? Before a muscle-up, you need to make sure you have a strict pull-up, right? Ideally, a wide grip pull-up and not a chin-up, Right? Before a wide grip pull up, maybe you should have a chin up, right? Because we know this motion is easier to pull than this one, right? This is more bicep. Absolutely. Before that, maybe you need to have, you know, there just has to be this development of a banded pull up, maybe, or something that you're getting yourself above the bar. Right, right. Um, maybe you're not because a muscle up is a lot of, believe it or not, it's a lot of hips. Maybe you're not exploding enough. Um, maybe you need to develop more upper body strength by doing like rows or um whatever the case may be but one thing i absolutely love about crossfit is the modification that there's a modification to every movement man like say a movement there's a modification to right um squats deadlifts push-ups you know what i mean like there's modifications to every single workout you know in the world of crossfit we call it rx and scaled <laughs> rx normally means you do the workout as you see it scaled meaning if there's a movement in the workout that you a can't do B, it's too difficult. Maybe C, that day you're, you know, you're working through an injury, whatever the case may be, you would scale that movement, make it a, you won't make the, the workout hard, uh, easier. You will make the movement easier, if that makes sense. Interesting. It's a very interesting perspective. The grand, not necessarily easier for that person, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. It's a very interesting perspective. I mean, I, mean, I didn't even know that, that they had a, modification for all these movements to be honest so we're talking about modifications quick question how did you modify your workouts in this covid lifestyle um yeah i i i, I lucked out man i locked out really I, I won't lie i locked out uh two years ago i realized i was like hey my dad like we don't use a garage as much as we should they're like what do you mean i'm like can i make this into a garage gym and um over the last two years, I general I made it into the I made I made my garage into a gym. I've never done the assault bike, but that's something that I'm really inclined to do. Like that's my kind of workout. That's something that I really like to like push myself. Oh man, toward. I'm sorry. Yes, I hate it. I hate. I hate. I, it's a love hate relationship with that. Everyone, love hate relationship. Everyone says it. that about the assault heart. bike. Dude, there is. It's funny because with the assault bike, there is absolutely no way of you. Uh, <laughs> There's no, you don't, you can't hide. You can't hide an assault bike, right? It exposes you. If you don't move, the machine won't move. Um, and you'll see, you'll, you'll soon realize what I mean by that. But yeah, man, that was a little, uh, little garage gym special. Uh, thank you so much. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, of it's, course, it's, guys. it's looking really amazing. Thanks, man. It's, uh, you know, I use it every, every day. It was something every year, or every couple months, I would buy something new. I think, I think I might've bought today. I might've, you know, I save my money by like a, a dumbbell. I find it off Facebook or a dumbbell off of whatever. And then, you know, you use it, you use it for you, you know, your, myself and my clients. Yeah. And COVID, it was crazy. So you really, really got lucky that and smart yeah. that you built. I lucked out. I lucked out. That's yeah. Amazing, man. And so one thing, and now like we saw your gym, we saw how passionate you're about CrossFit. You've been in two years now. You're actually a trainer as well. So what would be some of your favorite movements that you say for a beginner to try it out? You know, let's say, especially let's, let's do two scenarios. Let's say one with COVID, there's no equipment. So, you know, you can let, 
let us know that, you know, people can do any kind of CrossFit workouts with no equipment. And if they have like a small gym like yourself or like some kind of equipment, what are your favorite workouts? What are some of your work, some of your body movements that you would say are good for someone who wants to start out before they go into jump into CrossFit completely? Um, I think one thing, man, is get comfortable being, I, you know, just kind of like this phrase is, well, everyone should learn from it is getting comfortable being uncomfortable get comfortable moving at a pace that you're not comfortable right and anything in life growth doesn't happen in a place of comfort think about the first time learn subtraction i mean i have foreign parents every time I, i did addition wrong i used to get like hit or yelled at right i wasn't comfortable no one thought that was comfortable right but eventually i grew right same thing i like to think of it as i know that was a silly analogy but i think of it in fitness too right so anyone rather at the elite level intermediate advanced beginner whatever just simply get comfortable with being uncomfortable or at least no entering a workout or any workout is it should slightly be uncomfortable right um and that's you know going on a tangent here again is that that's why sometimes that's my little issue with bodybuilders is that man it's just like you're never uncomfortable you know what i mean i think even arnold said you're you're you, you should start counting your reps when it hurts right mm -hmm. How many do you guys know? How many people do you know actually do that? The I mean, second, except, except for the people who are probably competing at Mr. Olympia level, exactly. Muhammad Ali, exactly. Yeah, right. Muhammad Ali, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I mean, I, I think we're talking about an elite athlete, someone who've achieved that level, right, of success. Can only attach to that. What separates a lot of people is um, a lot of people are not, they're not comfortable. They're generally not comfortable being uncomfortable, but. For instance, like, you know, Rafi, you asked a question of what's a movement that I would recommend um, someone doing, someone with no equipment is honestly, I would say uh, burpees, right? Burpees, right? Um, simply chest hits the floor, you, you get back up there, right? Uh, our, our wrestling coach used to tell us burpees don't like you either. Like no one likes the burpees, don't worry, they don't like you either. But the reason why I say burpees is burpees is a movement that, you genuinely can choose how bad you want it to hurt, right? Um, so I tell all my clients, if I told you guys, hey, Rossi, um, and I can do a little like, quick demo here too. If I told you guys, hey, I want you guys to do 100 burpees for time, right? All I say is I want you to do 100 burpees for time. There's two ways, I can, there's multiple ways I can do that. I can simply step down, come out, just like this, come up, and then jump. Or I can simply get down, get back up, jump, get down, get back up. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you choose how fast and how bad you want it to hurt. Right. So a movement like burpees is I did it in my bedroom. You don't need no equipment at all, man. Um, no equipment at all. Now, if you do have some equipment, I mean, that's a whole different story. But um, that's definitely one thing I would say people can get used to doing is being uncomfortable. Burpees is a great bur beginner's workout. Um, that's actually a good benchmark right there. Do 100 burpees tonight. See how, how long it takes you. Do 100 burpees in a month. See how long it takes you. You see what I'm saying? I just want to add on oh, to the uncomfortable part. Uh, same thing in like your workouts daily. If you do a workout for like a month, sometimes two, three months, you start to plateau and you're like, hey, man, I'm not getting those same results I did in the beginning. Same thing you're saying, you got to shock and confuse those muscles. I'm not talking about literally electrical shock, but like confuse them in a way that they do grow when they're uncomfortable. Right. So exactly what you're talking about. So would right. you say, now, would you say that with, with no biased opinion here, would you say everyone should do CrossFit? No, no, not at all, man. You got to be, you got to have some type of insanity to you if you <laughs> generally want. Because I won't lie, man, there's, there's a joke that we say, actually, I lie, because that might not be fair at least at the level i i don't even want to say i'm at the level i aspire to be at right because that's a goal i'm working towards it's not for everyone but um there are some workouts that yeah you're in you're in round two. it's like it would be like 10 rounds and you're in round two or round three and i'll start questioning my life i'll start questioning my existence <laughs> of how tough it can be um that's a little joke we say as crossfitters it's just like Hey, you shouldn't be, if you're questioning your life in round two, that means you, 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 you know, you're coming out the gate too fast. You're, 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 you're not pacing yourself properly, but yeah, man, one thing I think what's beautiful about CrossFit is we see, 
we see it. I actually, yeah, you know what? I changed my mind. Everyone can, everyone should be able to do CrossFit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just because we see, we see like 85 year olds doing a box jump. We see a 17 year old girl doing muscle ups. We see it's, it's, it varies, man. It's like you, the beauty of CrossFit is that there are going to be some movements you're great at, some movements you're bad at. You don't, the rules and the standards for the movement, you don't make. They're already there. Therefore, certain people are going to be better at certain movements. Sure, maybe it's age, maybe it's uh, height, maybe it's weight, maybe it's strength, whatever the case may be. Um, so, yeah, I generally think everyone can, everyone can do CrossFit. Now, when it comes to like competing, that's just in anything, right? I mean, we all play basketball. I'm not in the NBA. I don't know if any of you guys are in the NBA, right? It all depends on um, the it, 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 competition varies from person to person. Awesome. So again, now we are just going to go with two questions. This is the fun part of the no podcast. Uh, your favorite CrossFit athlete? Matt Frazier. All right. And one person that you want to work out with, dead or alive? Matt Frazier. <laughs> that was easy. So just to give a context, Matt Frazier is a five-time world champion. He's the world's yeah. fittest man. And he, he just, just retired, retired last month. <sighs> oh, like absolute mind blow. Everyone was like, what like it it was crazy to cross. Like, I remember my buddy was like, yo, Frazier just retired. I was like, dang it. Now I never will have a chance to beat this guy. But that was a that was a lot of joke <laughs> to say, but his man his mindset if you guys watch his videos his mindset is it's it, it it's i will put the way this man thinks is you have your one percent your one percent are the athletes right like you have the one percent and then you have the one percent of the one percent that those are your muhammad ali those are your kobe bryant's those are your tom brady's i'm gonna throw matt fraser in that category because this guy's mental game is is why I think he's a five-time returning cross or a five-time back-to-back-to-back, five-times straight back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back um, CrossFit Games champion. Um, I would generally, honestly, I would love to look at him and be like, teach me. Like, everything you learn, you, I want to learn the ways, you know? Hey, you're in luck. If you're following him, he released, he's releasing his program soon, his programming. Yeah, I've seen that, man. I've seen that. And Matt Fraser, interesting that you say that about his mindset because he lives with the uh, what's the slogan? It's like hard work pays off. HWPO, a, yes, sir. HWPO. So, Isa, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much Absolutely. for the time. It was a really fruitful conversation. I'm sure of that course. people learned about CrossFit. And I really, really hope that me and Talha and others that are listening get into the CrossFit community as well. Absolutely, guys. If you guys, uh, Again, I'd love uh, if you guys, if you if you're not ready to go into a box, you guys are more than welcome in the garage. We can go over a CrossFit workout. Um, anyone listening to this podcast too, you know, just reach out, hit me up. We can. We yeah. Can work so, man. with that being said, where can people find you, Isa? Because I know you're a personal um, trainer as well. If someone wants to train with you, where can they find you? Just message me on Instagram. It's igalib30. I'm there. I'm there. Um, I'll I'll reach out as fast as I possibly can. Um, and then we'll get something started, man. We'll, uh, we'll have fun, man. I promise it's, I promise it's a lot of fun. It's I've been doing it for two years. I'm, I'm a guy that if I don't like something, I will straight up say to your face. Um, and all right, I will just move on. And man, I don't, I don't think I'll ever stop doing CrossFit guys. I don't think so. I generally don't like awesome. And I'm, I'm a local. I can come anytime, but Talha might fly down. But, you Talha, where do you live, man? I live in North Carolina. Oh, nice, man. Uh, yo, there are some elite CrossFitters on your side of town, dude. There oh, are really? some, yeah, there are some, there are some freaks of nature on that on the East Coast. Nice. Well, yeah, man. Considering it, so inshallah, we get to meet them. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, man, it's awesome. It's it's fun, man. It's a blast. But Isa, thank you so much for your insight. It was really, of course. Eye-opening. I really enjoyed the conversation, and uh, hopefully, Thanks, I'll be part of your CrossFit community soon. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow the Instagram page 2325fitness for more health and fitness information. If you have any questions, please send us an email at 2325.fit at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast.